After reading this story and really thinking about it, I've recognized one thing here. Jim Farley is furious. He's furious at his staff. In particular, management and executives. He believes that they really didn't think through the Ford Mustang Mach-E and the Ford F-150 Lightning. And then there's just obvious things that they should have thought of, manufactured and designed these vehicles. And when you read between the lines, well, it's very clear. Jim is saying, I'm not gonna pay you for doing stupid stuff. I'm absolutely baffled. What on earth is happening lately? The media, CNN, saying stuff like this? The world has gone crazy. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. My name's Sam Evans. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you so much for supporting myself and um, my family at this moment. It's been pretty crazy, to say the least. We'll be heading off in uh, eight days to Thailand for a few months, and hopefully it all goes well. If you want to know what I'm talking about, I'll put a link in the description below. Check it out. So Ford apparently has done some strange things with the Mustang Mach-E, and bizarrely, this is not Tesla fan sites. It's not Tesla Rati, it's not YouTube channels. No one's saying this, it's the mainstream media. It seems all of a sudden that a weird percentage of news has been positive Tesla news. I, I don't know what's going on, it's so strange. Americans, what the heck? What's happened to the media lately? They've been hit by the weird positive Tesla bug. CNN Business said that Ford showed this week, it's not gonna be as easy for traditional automakers to catch Tesla in the race to build the better electric vehicle, despite what the Tesla doubters think. Now, this is a key point that I've been trying to mention for a while now. It's not that easy to explain to some people who don't want to actually see logic. But basically what's happening right now is we're hearing companies like Ford say, well, we've got a new generation electric skateboard coming out. It's going to be amazing. Who else is saying that? Toyota is saying we're going to start building one in 2047. No, seriously, I think they said 2025 or something like that. Anyhow, lots of different automakers are saying they're going to be building one. And then people say, well, look, that's amazing. Look at this new electric structure skateboard coming from X brand. It's going to kill Tesla. But the thing is, they're just changing the rules. It's like, yeah, it's okay to compare that new product that's coming out in several years time with Tesla's product today. But it's not fair to compare Tesla's product coming out in several years time or maybe next year. I don't know when it's coming versus that product. Now, you've got to compare apples with apples, and that's the key point here that I think CNN is trying to say. Ford CEO Jim Farley was rather blunt about the problems that Ford have experienced, and they rolled out their EV models, the Mustang Mach-E and the F-150 Lightning. While both vehicles have a long list waiting of waiting customers, Farley admitted that Ford encountered many, many problems with their production. We didn't know that our wiring harness for the Mach-E was 1.6 kilometers longer than it needed to be. How do you not know that? That's strange. We didn't know it's 70 pounds heavier and that that's $300 in extra cost per vehicle for, uh, for nothing. He said that on a call with investors on Thursday, we didn't know that we underinvested in braking technology to save on the battery size. Now, some people have been saying in the Facebook group, the Electric Viking Facebook group. If you haven't joined it, I'll put a link in the description. Make sure you join it. Well, if you want to, go ahead. If you don't, don't. Some have been saying, oh, there's, there's not really any difference between EVs these days. Well, one very big difference is this. For example, Volkswagen Group just brought out their new Cupra Born EV, right? It's a relatively small vehicle. It's like the size of a Toyota Corolla, but it weighs more than a Tesla Model Y. That's a pretty big difference, my friends. That's massive. Now, imagine the extra brakes you need to stop that thing. Imagine the extra wear and tear you're gonna get by having a car that weighs probably 500 kilos than it could have otherwise. That is significant. And that is a key point of difference. Here, Ford is basically saying, well, we made the car way heavier than we should have because we added nearly two kilometers of wiring for, well, no reason. I love the fact that Jim Farley is being straight up honest about this, just admitting to the truth here. How many CEOs will actually do this? That's You've got to say that's pretty cool that he's doing that. At the same time, it does show you legacy automakers don't have any Tesla killers, in my opinion, just lurking around the corner. 
probably the closest competition is BYD. And yeah, BYD vehicles are great, but if you've driven one, you'll find the ADAS safety systems, depending on your, my experience has been, to be honest, I can only use one word, it's been infuriating. You can ask my wife about that too. She'll share the same sentiment with you. Now it drives really well, great battery. However, the software, Tesla is way ahead in. And I think even BYD have admitted to that fact. I'll tell you that themselves. Farley said these and other cost problems meant that Ford left about two billion of profit on the table. As a result, Ford has gone and actually slashed the bonuses and the salaries of their massively high paid executives, which I think is fair. If you're gonna get paid for performance, then your performance should be taken into consideration when you get these bonuses. And I've talked about these bonuses on the channel before. No one watched that video I made, I don't know why, but the bonuses of some of these staff at Ford and General Motors are just outrageous. I don't understand. It's like if they, if they, if the company makes less money, they often just get paid more. It's bizarre, but not this time. I like what Jim Farley is doing here. He's saying, yeah, guys, $2 billion on the table. We didn't have to do that. I've figured out what you've done now. It was stupid. I'm not gonna pay you for stupid. CNN Business says it's a sign that those who predicted that Tesla would soon lose its advantage due to increased competition in EV offerings from the established automakers were getting ahead of themselves. Maybe CNN Business can speak for themselves here. Maybe they were getting ahead of themselves. Maybe they're talking about their own staff. Maybe you should fire some of those idiot staff that are just clickbaiting you with nonsense. Those automakers have the natural advantage of deep pockets, a large network of factories and sales channels, and more than a century's worth of experience designing, building, and selling cars. But that doesn't mean they can jump into making an EV like it's just an update of a gas-powered car or truck that they've been making for decades. And that's one of the key problems here. That I mean, companies like Mercedes-Benz, BMW, numerous automakers, they bring out these cars, they still have a transmission tunnel, right? It's a gasoline-powered car. Toyota, BZ4X, it's a gasoline-powered structure to that car which is the reason why it's mediocre and journalists have panned it. I mean, this, these are some of the biggest companies in the world it couldn't be bothered making a proper EV. They just went, oh yeah, 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 just use our, it'll be fine. Just use our existing EQA or whatever, right? Turn that into, into an EV. And then I'm looking at the weights and I'm thinking, why is this car 850, 900 pounds heavier than a similar car of the same size from another brand? You know what I'm talking about here, right? It doesn't add up. Well. That's what it is. CNN goes on. Tesla is sitting at the top of the EV mountain that every other automaker is trying to climb, said Dan Ives, tech analyst with Wedbush Securities. It's easier said than done. Not all problems Ford reported are related to its attempt to shift to a lineup of EVs rather than traditional internal combustion engines. As Farley conceded on the call, Ford has been the number one in recalls in the US for the last two years. In fact, it's number one worldwide. Clearly, that's not acceptable, he said. Now, I really like the way Farley's is acting. I mean, I don't think that this guy is just some idiot walking around talking nonsense. He really does know what he's talking about. And he's got a real healthy level of respect for his competition. When you have that kind of respect for the competition, what do you do? You learn from them. Like virtually all global automakers, Ford is seeking to radically shift its lineup of vehicles with a target of 40% pure EVs by 2030, not enough compared to only 3% of US sales last year, 3%. It's doing so due to growing customer demand for EVs, Ford's so-called iPhone moment, according to Jim Farley, to meet tougher environmental regulations around the globe and also to reduce labor costs. Labor is a big challenge. EVs require about 30% less labor to assemble than a traditional internal combustion engine. But the start of that transformation has clearly not gone as smoothly as Farley or investors had hoped. While we're making progress, it's hard work, said Farley. As with any transformation of this magnitude, certain parts are moving faster than I expected and other parts are taking longer. Farley promised that Ford is learning from the problems it is encountering. He says that the lessons learned will make its next generation of EVs not only better, but more efficient to build. But he faced questions from analysts about when Ford will be able to get past these problems and have profit margins similar to Tesla while regularly selling cars for over 25% more than they cost the company. That's an impossible question. I mean, these analysts could ask that of any company in the world. What are they gonna say? Uh, yeah, we will, um, 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 I don't know, um, 
we'll uh, build a new battery factory. I mean, what do you what do you say to that? Maybe a different way of asking this is, do you think you can sell a $40,000 electric crossover with a 20% gross margin? Asked Rod Leish of Wolf Research. Well, the clear answer to that, according to all the quotes that we have from these automakers over the last six months is no, except General Motors, who are saying they can sell one for 30,000, but they also just canceled their battery project with LG Chem because, well, who knows? They had a disagreement falling out Sounds like General Motors now is maybe considering moving to 4680 style cylindrical batteries and basically uh, changing the way they go about their Ultium mega amazing structural battery packs and changing the way that they go about building their Ultium mega amazing super duper 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 fantastic skateboards. Strange that. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, by the way, I made a video about that. I'll put a link in the description below. The good news for traditional automakers is they have the financial wherewithal both in cash on hand and ongoing profits from their internal combustion engine sales. Some of them do, some of them don't. Some of them have a ton of debt. That's worth remembering. I mean, cash is one thing. Having a mountain of debt like Tesla and Volkswagen, that's another. GM just reported record annual profits, excluding special items for just missed doing so, despite the disappointing fourth quarter results. Many analysts say they expect most of the EV market will eventually be in the hands of the traditional automakers who are investing tens of billions in making the switch. They've been saying this for years. Funny that, isn't it? Hasn't happened yet. I think the majority of legacy automakers will own a large portion of the market share in time, said Eric Schiffer, CEO of private equity firm, The Patriarch Organization, which he said neither owns nor shorts Tesla shares. But Schiffer said the missteps from the established automakers and the lead that Tesla has in the field will give it a chance to grow to as many as 20 million vehicles a year in the future. Far more than the total number of vehicles, gas or electric that any automaker has ever sold. There are no missteps by established automakers that will condemn their future success, said Schiffer. They just cost future resources and time. Well, as you guys know, I totally disagree with that. I totally, I think he doesn't understand the auto market. He doesn't understand disruption. He doesn't understand the disruption that's happening right now. It's the greatest disruption in history. Why? Because we're talking about literally trillions of dollars. It's the biggest industry in the world. If you include all these subsidiary suppliers, then it's the biggest employer for many of these places. If, for example, the Japanese automotive industry is the Japanese industry. It is the Japanese economy. And Japan is in dire straits. Whether or not Schiffer doesn't realize this or not, it's really irrelevant. Now, Ford isn't the only traditional automaker having problems with its early EV offerings because at least Ford are trying. Some of these other companies are not even doing anything. I mean, Honda, for example, what are they doing? Uh, not much. Mazda, what are they doing? Uh, Jack. I mean, seriously, Honda, what are they going to do? They're going to use General Motors' amazing Ultium platform. I mean, GM isn't even sure themselves that that's going to work if they're considering cylindrical batteries now. In 2021, General Motors had to recall of all of the 140,000 Chevrolet bolts it had built. Then it's only US EV due to a fire risk. Sales were halted until the problem could be fixed. They resumed last year, but GM ended up with total US EV sales of just under 40,000. That's peanuts. Ford is now number two in terms of US sales of EVs, but that's still so far behind Tesla. That gap between the companies, it's its not shrinking, as all the media said it would. In 2022, Ford's US EV sales came to just under 62,000, roughly one-tenth of Tesla's US sales that year. Tesla does not break down how many of its 1.3 million EV sales worldwide were in the US, but its recent annual filings say half of its revenue came from the US sales last year. That means around 600,000 US Tesla sales in 2022. Isn't it weird when the media starts to change their tune and start to contradict themselves? I think it's pretty clear that's what is happening here. I mean, in general, CNN just likes to pile on Tesla. And now all of a sudden they're saying, I don't know, we told you that they had an advantage. We told you that they were doing better than Ford. We told you that Ford didn't know how to make an EV. Eh, who knows? Maybe that's just Jim Farley telling them to shut up and actually talk some sense. I'm not sure. Whatever is going on, feels like I'm living in the twilight zone here. Why is CNN suddenly praising Tesla, saying they have this huge lead, saying they could make 20 million cars a year? Now, I don't think they'll even do that. 
I mean, think about that. That's like one third of the global auto market. I don't see that happening. But hey, 10 million, absolutely possible. Please, my friends, let me know in the comments what is going on, what is with this change in sentiment, and what is with the deal with, you know, Tesla selling out of the Model Y for the next six months in the US. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.